Good evening. Thank you for joining me for this evening's said even song, according to the Book of Common Prayer. Thank you for joining. There are these themes which we can find in this evening's scriptures. That God overturns what we think is important. But when we see things being overturned, even when the result seems nonsense, we need to trust him. He knows what he is making, and we can be included in it. Let's hold a moment of silence, bring ourselves into his presence. A worship for Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven, to offer unto him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Therefore let us prepare in silence, call to mind our sin, and remember God's presence with us now. Please follow. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy on us, miserable offenders. Spare thy them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thy them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thy lips, and our mouth shall, shall flow forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. 
psalm for this evening is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will we not fear though the earth be moved and though the mountains tremble at the heart of the sea. Though the waters rage and swell and though the mountains quake at the towering seas, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations are in an uproar and the kingdoms are shaken, but God utters his voice and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord. What destruction he has wrought upon the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world. He shatters the bow and snaps the spear and burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the first book of the prophet Samuel. It is about the ongoing war between King Saul and David. It's in the 24th chapter. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. And the men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterwards, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed. Afterwards, David rose up and went out of the king and called after Saul, My Lord, the king. When Saul looked before him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obey. David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of those who say David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you. But I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand. For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you. When David had finished speaking, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. 
He said to David, you are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Let's say Mary's song, Magnificat, the song of overturning what is. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. New Testament reading is in the Gospel according to St. Luke in chapter 14. Jesus also said to the one who had invited him to eat with him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a piece of land and I must go and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. And another said, I've just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master and the owner of the house became angry and said, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, sir, what you ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited shall taste my supper. The Song of Simeon, Mount Dimitis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with our spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. For God make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Call it for this Sunday, the second after Trinity. <coughs> o Lord, who has taught us that all our doings without charity are nothing, Send thy Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The God from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give. With both, our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that, by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quiet. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer in the time of illness and COVID-19. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fear, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may my words and all our thoughts be acceptable to God, our strength and our redeemer. 
precies. Ja. Under a tree, Alice saw a large table with three occupants all at one corner of it. No room, no room, they cried when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice, and she sat down. Have some wine, the March Hare said. I don't see any wine, she said. There isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it, said Alice angrily. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited, said the March Hare. I didn't know it was your table, said Alice. It's laid for a great many more than three. This evening's song tells us to remember that whatever we see going on, the earth breaking apart, the mountains collapsing and heaving in the middle of the roiling, roaring sea, nations and kingdoms falling to bits, even when all this is happening around us, when everything seems to be nonsense, the city of God stands firm. It stands firm for those who recognise it for what it is. The place where the Lord abides, where he is to be found at home. Isaiah prophesied that the Lord would make on his mountain a feast of rich food. Where he would destroy the shroud that is over all peoples and in a graphic phrase, swallow up death forever. Prophecy describes this place as a new Jerusalem, purified, to which all the nations would come in God's own time, where he would receive them. Into his immeasurable generosity, giving nourishment beyond imagining. Each of these images is to do with overturning what seems to us to be established and dependable, the settled order of the world, even to the extent that we seem to be in nonsense land, the pecking order for precedence in the queue for divine favour has disappeared. Each image is to do with the faithfulness, the steadfastness of the Lord whose holy mountain will endure, even though all else fail. The feast prepared on this mountain is not protected from incomers by those who in their own minds have it already in their possession. Seeing the approach of someone not one of them, they cannot shriek. No room, no room. The invitations are God's alone, given to any who will answer. This will result in the sharing of God's generosity between people who never thought they would meet or share anything. They are there because they have accepted an invitation they never expected. And the question is how to answer it when it comes, because it will come to each of us. <coughs> Our Old Testament reading tells us of David faced with a serious quandary. The boy from Bethlehem, whom nobody had ever thought of, had been chosen by God to succeed Saul. Saul was trying to kill him and came into a cave where David and his men were hiding. David could have killed him and taken the throne for which he had been chosen. And for a moment, the whole of the settled order of Israel hung in the balance. But Saul was also the anointed of the Lord. And for David, killing him was forbidden. It didn't make much difference to Saul. Given an invitation to repent and change, he didn't. After groveling and crocodile tears, he went on as before. He had better and more immediate things to do than to recognise and accept the invitation of God.
A king in another story arranged a feast and invited everyone who expected to be invited. But the day came and they all rejected the invitation. Simply, each had other, better, more important things to do. So the old priorities were turned upside down. The story is the story of a Magnificat moment. Go and see who you can find and bring them all in. It doesn't matter who they seem to be. I am inviting anybody who will come. And far from no room, no room, there was abundant room. After the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan, 18-year-old Dylan Beach, from one of the prince's charities, said to the television interviewer about his having been invited into Windsor Castle grounds, this isn't the sort of thing that happens to people like me. But it can be, both at Windsor and on the Holy Mountain. Not only is there enough room, there is space left over. And in this feast, when you are offered wine, you can trust that there is plenty. In the early 15th century, André Rublev painted the table in an icon, and here it is. It is as if the three occupants of the table are waiting for us to take our place on the unoccupied side of the table. The Lord's Feast is for everyone, without reserve except for those who were originally invited but found better and more important things to do. Let's pray. Lord of Light and Truth, who in Jesus gives peace to our hearts and minds and renews and refreshes our whole being, may we know that you are an ever-present help in trouble. Heal us and we shall be healed. Strengthen us and in your strength we shall be strong. Grant these gifts for the sake of Jesus our Saviour and Redeemer, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Father of love and compassion, we are less ready to pray and hear you than you are to hear us. Help us to know that you are with us here, now, always. Open our ears and hearts to hear your invitation. We hold before you all who come to your church with hopes and fears and doubts and worries with special needs. Help them to know your presence and your ready help. We wait upon you. You are our helper and deliverer. We pray for the people of your world, those in power and those oppressed by the power of others, any who suffer violence or threats, those affected by natural upheavals, those without food or shelter, without a place to call home. We wait upon you. You are our helper and deliverer. We thank you for our security and the love of friends and families. We remember before you those for whom family and home are not safe, who are kept down or not valued, who are abused or neglected. We wait upon you. You are our help and deliverer. You know the needs of your people at St. Francis at this time. Send your spirit to deepen our love for you and strengthen our fellowship with one another. May we be patient, thoughtful and kind, knowing that all we do is for your glory. Bless Peter, Paula, Susie and Ruth as they move from us to London, and bless whoever is to be the future vicar of our parish. 
guide, strengthen, and uphold her or him with your heavenly grace. We wait upon you. You are our help and our deliverer. We remember and hold before you all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, all who are ill, particularly those who you have entrusted to our care. Yes. All who do not know peace or whose lives are disturbed by fear or loneliness, we wait upon you. You are our help and our deliverer. We give you thanks because by your loving mercy, Jesus, our Redeemer, you have opened for us the gate of life and joy with you. And we thank you for those who have gone before us into your eternal presence and love. Surely the grace of God is sufficient to meet all our needs. The power of God is revealed in weakness. He gives us peace in trouble. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Now let's say together, holding each other in our thoughts and those known to us, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us now and forever. Amen.